Let's continue our tour of the smart instruments by looking at the smart guitar and the smart bass. And the smart guitar especially is just a great and fun tool to have on hand when you're trying to flesh out parts or come up with a demo. It's very easy to learn. You don't even necessarily need to know how to play guitar to come up with some great sounding guitar parts. So let's start by taking a look at the smart guitar. So right now we're seeing a representation of an acoustic guitar. If you tap the acoustic name, you see you have access to three other guitars you can play around with. You've got the classic clean, hard rock, you can see these all have different looks, and the roots rock. So four distinct guitar sounds to choose from here. Let's go back and start with the acoustic. Now there are a couple of ways you can play the smart guitar. At its default state here, you can tap the top of these chord strips. You can see they each have a chord name at the top, and simply by tapping one, you play that chord. Another way to play it is just simply tapping the notes on the chord strips. Or you can also strum it like a real guitar. You could even do a combination of tapping notes and strumming. Now you might have been noticing I've been muting the chords simply by holding down in one of the blank areas on the end of the fretboard here. You can do that on either end. And you can actually hold that down while you play or strum to get the muted guitar sound. Now the chord strips we're seeing right now are based on the key of the song. If you recall, we go to settings, and you can see the key currently is C major. So GarageBand selects the chords that are most common for the key you've selected. If you want to change the key, just go back into settings, and if I choose, say, A minor, you can see I get a different set of chords. Let me change that back to C major. Now there may be cases where you want to keep the current key of the song, but you want to use a different chord, maybe one that doesn't appear here. In that case, all you do is go back to settings and tap edit chords. From here, select the chord strip that you want to change. So maybe in this case, I want to start with the B flat, and I want to change that to a B flat diminished, seventh, and you even get the choice here of changing the bass note of the chord. So right now it's an A sharp, I could make that an A, or a B, and so on. Maybe I'll just make that an F. So right now I have a B flat diminished seventh with an F bass. Sounds like that. Once you change a chord strip, it's gonna stay that way no matter which guitar you select. So if I switched over to say the hard rock guitar, I still have that same chord. Now if you change your mind, and you want to set the chord back to the way it was, just go back to your settings, edit chords, select it, and then tap revert. So now we're back to the B flat major. So you can see there are many ways to play the smart guitar. Now these methods I've shown you so far still require a sense of rhythm and some knowledge about the way notes work. Now if you want GarageBand to do more of the heavy lifting for you, you can use the autoplay feature. You can see we have an autoplay dial here and it has four positions. I can simply move that to one of the four positions and you can see the strings have now disappeared from the fretboard. All I have to do now is tap a chord strip to play it. Look ma, no hands. You can choose one of the other positions. Got some finger picking going on there. Now another really cool thing about this is there are actually two more hidden patterns within each one of these chord strips. When you tap with one finger, you get one chord pattern. If you tap with two, you get a slightly different one. And if you tap with three, you get yet another one. And that's the case for each one of these four different autoplay positions. There's the basic. And slightly more aggressive. So those are the different autoplay positions you can play around with. It really adds a lot of variety to the music you're trying to compose. And that holds the same no matter which guitar you select. If I go back to the hard rock guitar, for instance, we have different autoplay patterns here as well.
three fingers. We're gonna go back to two. Now yet another way to play the smart guitar is to switch from chords to notes. Each guitar has a switch where you can go from chords to notes, and that gives you a fretboard for that particular guitar. So here, instead of strumming chord strips, you tap out the notes you want to play. You can even bend the strings. You can play multiple notes together. And as we saw with the regular touch instruments, you also have access to the scale button, so you can choose what type of scale you want to play in. So for instance, if I chose minor blues, all the notes I play will be in that particular scale. Now you notice that we have certain frets that are lighter than the others. Those are all the roots in the particular scale, so this makes it very easy to solo in the scale that you selected. I'm going to switch that back to the off position so I have access to the full fretboard again. Now you might have noticed that the electric guitars also have two effects pedals associated with each one. So in this case, with the hard rock, I have Vintage Drive and Robo Flanger, and you simply turn them on by tapping their foot switches there. And then you can hear the effects. Each guitar has its own set of two pedals, but you can't change them when you're working the smart guitar. The only time you can swap pedals in and out or if you're working with the actual guitar amp instrument. So just so you can get an idea of how these pedals sound, I'm just going to switch back to chords, I'll turn on autoplay, and I'll just tap the pedals on and off. Nice little echo effect there. Try it on the classic clean. Here's the chorus. So you can get some great additional sounds by adding the stomp boxes to your smart guitar. All right, now let's take a look at the smart bass. Select instruments, switch over to smart bass. So the smart bass layout is very similar to the smart guitar. We have the same types of chord strips, only with the smart bass we can't tap the top of the chord strips to play chords, because you generally don't play chords on a bass. But you can tap out bass patterns by either strumming the chords like this or just tap out a rhythm. The bass also has its own autoplay patterns. Each one has four positions again. And you have the same hidden patterns by tapping with two or three fingers. You can select from three models of electric basses, Liverpool, Muted, and Picked, an upright bass as well. This is cool if you want an upright bass sound. Especially cool if you want a fretless sound, you can switch over to notes. Again, we see the fretboard here, but you can do slides and bends on the bass here as well. And that holds true again for whichever bass you pick. You get the fretboard when we have notes selected. Incidentally, if you want to play the open notes of any of these strings, just play behind the nut here. That'll give you the E here, for example. GarageBand also includes four synth basses in here as well, for instance, Exoplanet. And they make it very easy for you to play this instrument if you're used to playing the bass fretboard, but it sounds very different from a regular bass. You get controls for cutoff and, in this case, FM. Actually, let me pick a different bass that holds out a little bit longer. This changes to resonance in this case. But you can start playing with sounds here. Or of course you can also switch back to chords, where you can tap autoplay chords. Or just again, tap out specific notes on the chord strips. So for the most part, smart bass and smart guitar are very similar to each other, and you shouldn't have much trouble playing them once you get a little hands-on time playing both of those instruments.